Thank you. I will be, try to be brief. It's hard for a politician to do that. But I want to thank Dr. Huff not only for that wonderful introduction or invitation to be with you, but most of all, I want to thank him for his leadership because it was Dr. Huff and it was Jim Goodman and it was Karen Condor and it was Jim Hunt and Robin Britt that started Smart Start, had the vision for that, had the tenacity to create it. And then following them, Stephanie Fonhul and Ashley Thrift and Clark Plexico helped make it grow. But it's you in this room that brought Smart Start to be a, a national award-winning program. It is you in this room that made it a model for the nation. And it's you in this room that made it a public-private partnership that everybody in the nation admires. Now, we all know that it helps children prepare for the future. It makes them healthier and better ready to learn when they enter school. But what I want these legislators to know in Raleigh is that it's also a program that is absolutely good for business because they say they're pro-business. We want them to prove that out. It's good for business because the Federal Reserve says it's good for business. I was in a presentation of the North Carolina Economic Development Board on which I said the Federal Reserve gave a presentation. They said, you know, we did a study. We don't engage in social issues, but we did the research and the evidence is so compelling that we want everybody to know that the best education dollar you can make is in early childhood education. You get a return of two to four for every dollar you invest. It's the best thing that you can do. Duke University validates that study. Big business is happy with Smart Start because a happy worker is a productive worker. And they're happy when they know their children are safe and healthy and learning in a four or five star center. And what we need those legislators to know that Smart Start and early childhood development is an economy in and of itself. 47,000 people plus, almost 50,000 people employed by early childhood development centers and those types of programs. It has almost a $2 billion impact on our economy. Why would you want to erode that? Also, when you're talking about where are the jobs today, many people are being retrained to come back and work in child care centers. So I ask, why would you want to cut such a program by 20%? That does not make sense. If these people are the friend of small business, then be a friend to the small businesses that own and operate child daycare centers. If you're the friend of big business, support Smart Start. You know, I understand we have a problem with the budget. I fully understand that. And we have to solve that problem. And we have to do it with shared responsibility. But Smart Start is taking an unfair share of that responsibility. And they need to realize that. I, somebody commented on my Carolina tie as I walked in, but I will tell you that I am a Carolina fan, and I'm a fan of Roy Williams, and I read his book, Hard Work. And whether you're for Duke or State, I recommend that book to you. But in the forward, in the forward, yeah, thank you. In the forward to that book, Roy Williams says this, I have learned during my lifetime that we should never be pushed by our problems, but we should be led by our dreams. We should never be pushed by our problems, but we should be led by our dreams. We have a problem with the budget. We have to address that problem with the budget. And we will address that problem with the budget, but we should do so with an eye toward the future, with an eye toward our dreams. A dream of a healthier child, a child that performs better academically, a child that will make a better citizen, a child that will drive our economy in the future. What I am here to tell each and every one of you, and I'm about through, is that you never disappoint. I appreciate what you do. You make North Carolina better. You make these children better. You make our economy better. And I thank you for that. You never disappoint. You're not like the young couple that had been married almost one year. And about a week before the anniversary, the wife saw her husband at breakfast and she said, you know, honey, I had a dream last night. I dreamed you brought me this beautiful package. And honey, I opened that package great glee and I, I looked and I opened it up and there was this beautiful strand of pearls just like the one down at the corner jewelry store in the right hand window.
no honey. So, you know, she hoped he got the hint. The next week, their anniversary came, and he gave her this beautiful, beautiful package. She tore into it and opened it. Oh, she asked him at that. She says, I wonder what that dream means. She was hoping he would get that message. So, the next week, he had this beautiful package, and she tore into it, and she opened it up, and there was this book by Sigmund Freud entitled, The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> Well, I say that for, for two reasons, for two reasons. She was very disappointed, but you never disappoint. For the second reason, I'm afraid that husband is just a little bit like some of those people in Raleigh today. He just didn't get it. We've got to make sure they get it. The final little story I can tell to you is of a little boy who was home. He was about four years old. And neighbor called Mrs. Jones. She said, Johnny, is your mama there this morning? He whispered and he said, yes ma'am, but she's in the bedroom. She didn't want to bother the mother. She knew she was probably resting. She knew Johnny was a handful. She said, well Johnny, I know it's unusual 10 o'clock in the morning, but is your father there today? He said, whispered again. He said, yes ma'am, but daddy's in the bedroom with mama. Well, she wanted to go there, but she decided she wouldn't. She said, Johnny, I know it would be unusual, but is, by any chance is there another adult in the house today? He whispered again. He said, yes, ma'am. There's a policeman here, but he's in the bedroom with Mama and Daddy. Miss Jones could not stand it. She had to ask, Johnny, I have to ask you, why is the policeman there with your mother and father in the bedroom? He whispered again. He says, they're looking for me. <laughs> I will tell you that throughout North Carolina, throughout this nation, we are looking for people like you. People that care about our future, people that care about our children, people that make a difference in our lives. That is what you do. That is why I am here tonight. That's why my wife Lucille is here tonight, to come here and thank you for the great job that you do for North Carolina. We appreciate you. We wish you the best. We're with you in trying to work that legislature. Thank you a lot.